Woohoo! Welcome back, everybody, to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo, and I have another fan casting video for you guys. Today, we are going to be talking about the one, the only, the great Professor Charles Francis Xavier. We are going to be talking about the man, the myth, the mutant, the legend, the homo superior that brought everybody together, the one that made us all realize that no matter what your political standings are, you can come together, you can work together as a team, and you can try to fight for the greater good. And then, obviously, we have other mutants out there that taught us the opposite. <laughs> but either way, it's fun. And so I wanted to get into this one with you guys. I've got, um, a, I've got my top five picks here for Professor X, and I've got a few bonuses at the end. Um, this one was really difficult for me because there's a, a number of different actors that I think work really nicely in the role. Um, for varying reasons, and I just, you know, I just want to see the role done right, so it's it's difficult for me to try to narrow it down, but I'm going to try to do that for you guys today. So let's go ahead and jump right in to Professor X, Professor Charles Xavier, the man himself. So in my fan casting uh, for this, I'm going to be picking uh, across a range of ages. Now, the age ranges that I'm going to be picking are anywhere between 66 is essentially the actor age that I'm going to be picking as the highest. And then all the way down to, um, if you include the bonus actors, um, down to 46 is the lowest I'm willing to go because I want Professor X to be someone that is older than the mutants I picked and the actors I picked for the mutants that he's going to be leading. So um, I need him to be a little bit older um, so you'll see that as kind of a, a theme. And unlike my other um, lists that I've made so far, this one is going to be listed in order of incremental actor age from, from oldest to youngest, um, not necessarily in order of favor, okay? And the other lists were obvious, were not listed in the order of favor either, but this one is organized by age. Here we go. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So first up, we're looking at Professor X. You guys already know, I'm gonna go ahead and start with this. My first pick is Terry O'Quinn. Um, and he is 66 years of age. Um, I have his height here, he's six foot, but that doesn't matter, he's gonna be in a wheelchair, all right? So um, height is not really relevant. I'm gonna mention it from time to time, but this is what it is. You guys should know this actor from Lost, okay? Um, if you guys don't already know who he is, I know him from Lost, but he was also in a, a, a film called The Stepfather. He was in The Rocketeer way back in uh, 1991, good old 1991. And um, he was in Hawaii Five-0. Uh, he was in a TV series called Patriot. Um, he was in Castle Rock. Apparently he was also Professor Mystery in Phineas and Ferb, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Um, but he's a really likable guy. This is huge for Professor X. So some of the actors that I picked are not going to have these same qualities. But this is important to me for this actor is that he specifically looks quite a bit like Professor X. I'm going to go ahead and jump to this one. Um, you guys can see this right here. He looks a lot like a lot of the comic book iterations. In Lost, he actually played a cripple. And uh, part of the, the mystery that happens in the first episode, if you haven't seen Lost, first of all, you should see it. I'm not spoiling a whole lot, but when they crash land on the island because they're lost, um, you know, he, he was in a wheelchair. And all of a sudden, on the island, he's standing. And uh, he has a, the ability to move again, whereas before he crash landed, he was not able. He was um, paralyzed from the waist down. And so he's already, we've already gotten to know him on the screen as a likable, lovable leader who cares about the team, who cares about uniting two separate factions on the island, for instance. He's also skilled with a wheelchair. He's already familiar with that. Um, we've already gotten to see him basically play um, kind of like an island survivor version of Professor X, which is really, really cool. That was when I, when I was watching it, I was like, wow, this guy is totally cut out for Professor X, and I've been waiting for a very long time to make this video, but I'm obviously not the only person that um, sees this in him. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over here. Somebody else made this. My pick for a new Professor X, they just Photoshopped his face onto the, <laughs> onto the Professor X um, of, of this image here. They just swapped it out. 
they they kept the jaw a little too low, I think, but whatever, you know, <laughs> it's still pretty good. Um, and I think it works. I think it, it is a, a spot on casting. I think he's right for the role. Um, I think he's got the great personality that would that would be that likable, um, you know, soft hearted, um, but also great leader. You know, I, I think that's that's great. I don't have a whole lot more to say about that guy, but you guys let me know down below if this is something that you see that I see. If you guys are seeing what I'm seeing, do you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> So next up is Brian Cranston. So this one is uh, a lot of fun for me because I, I've i been a huge fan of Power Rangers since I was a kid, like a lot of you guys who are watching. Um, and a lot of people don't know, but the original Blue Ranger, his name is Billy Cranston. And um, one of the reasons why they picked that name was because Brian Cranston was, I believe he was a stagehand and he was doing a lot of vocal roles like for the villains. Um, and so he was part of the original team that was making the Power Rangers. And so, um, you know, as an homage to him, they named the Blue Ranger Billy Cranston after Brian Cranston. And so uh, when the 2017 Power Rangers movie came out, he got cast to play Zordon. And I thought that was really cool. He knocked it out of the park, did a great job. Fantastic actor. But also, um, I wanted to show you this, okay? So a couple of people have already started to, you know, try to fan cast him. I think even Boss Logic did an art online of um, him as Mr. Sinister because they enjoyed his his darker role in Breaking Bad so very much, which would be this, and then 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 this, and, then this, and it, the list just goes on and on. But I honestly, I want to see him play you know, a more, a more caring leader. I want to see him play Professor X. And I think that, you know, there's not a whole lot of pics of him with zero hair as far as, you know, like on top and then also um, with the scruff and the beard. A lot of these pics show if he's, if he's short on top, he's got facial hair. If he doesn't have any facial hair, he's got long on top. So it's hard to find pictures like that. But this, for example, is a great cross, uh, cross examination to show you just how very similar him and some of the previous incarnations, Patrick Stewart, um, are, you know, how, how they look. They, they look very similar. He looks the part for Professor X, and I know he's got the chops for the role. Let me know down below if you guys think the same way, if you guys think that he is there. Again, I didn't mention his age. Brian Cranston is 62 years old, making him the second oldest on my list. Um, but that's perfect. That's exactly where I want, I want him. And so... As my list goes on, you're going to see the age range drop and drop and drop. Um, and it's going to get slightly further and further from where my my target Professor X would be. Um, so anyway, let me just go ahead and jump to the next one. Let me know down below if you guys think Brian Cranston ought to play Professor X in the MCU. Um, so here's, here's next. The next person on the list, Daniel Day-Lewis, 61 years of age. But he looks in this, like he's got a younger face, but an older demeanor. And um, I think he, he could play a, a range of, of different ages. He's six foot two, not that that matters because he's gonna be in a wheelchair. Um, not a lot of fan casting for this one. Uh, you can see here there's some people have all these different picks, which by the way, I like all these picks. Um, for Professor X, um, he's on the list. This guy uh, right here, it shows like, imagine the hair's gone right here. He's got almost the same, you know, complexion. He's, he, he fits the bill quite, quite nicely visually. Um, and so I wanted to, I wanted to show off um, how, how well he could do this. And he plays crazy roles. He was in The Last of the Mohicans. Um, he was in Lincoln. He does m insane transformations whenever he plays a role. Um, he is the truest actor, probably one of the, arguably one of the best actors of all time. Um, but I, I think that, I don't think he would take the role, but I would hope that if he would take the role, he would consider it because I think he's a great, great pick for the role. I did have one more thing I wanted to say about Daniel Day-Lewis. His role in Lincoln, so if you guys don't know, Lincoln was, um, you know, one of the presidents of the United States. He was um, the one who ended the Civil War, the American Civil War, and um, with that, simultaneously brought a, a turning in the country to end slavery. 
and uh, and thus that was kind of the beginning of the shift to end racism. It kickstarted that, and so he had to dig into that that role heavily. He understands racism. He understands what it was like for for people of a certain ethnicity or color or um, you know to to be ostracized, to be hated, to be treated as less than, to be treated as second class citizens. That type of stuff, he's familiar with that. He's in, he's incredibly method to the point that it annoys his fellow actors and and uh, stagehands because um, he gets so deep into it. He he literally shows up to work already Lincoln, and then he leaves and he's still Lincoln, and he's at home with his wife. He's still Lincoln, and I think that because X Men had a political background and it had a racial background, so like. The mutants represented minority people groups and it's like this new r race an actual race not like black and white and and yellow and different skin colors but actual races where it's a different species it's the next evolution of humanity and they're being treated as monsters they're being treated as um less than they don't have human rights because are they even human are they alien what's going on here and a lot of people are afraid and they're treating them terribly you know beating them riots all kinds of stuff um, he would understand that and so for him to you know have played Lincoln he would be able to embody that spirit of no we need to we need to make a massive change in the culture as Professor X to create a, a universe a world where mutants and humans can coexist peacefully it's a lot like the times in the Civil War and so that's you know that would be very helpful that's one of the reasons why i was thinking oh wow that would actually work really really nicely not just because he's a, a grade a actor among grade a actors but he also understands the concept behind the x-men and so that i think would be really cool i'm gonna move on i said a lot about him so let's keep moving anyway next on the list wayne pygram so you guys may not know who you're looking at here but he was in um farscape it's a sci-fi TV show. Um, it's kind of Power Rangers-esque mixed with like Star Trek. Uh, very interesting uh, style. I think it was I think it was lower budget, but I'm not sure what the budget is exactly. But it looked lower budget. Um, but he was also in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Now it, you're not going to recognize him from this picture, but he actually played Grand Moff Tarkin. Um, and he or at the time in Episode Three it was Governor Tarkin. So he played Governor Tarkin with makeups and makeup and prosthetics. Um, this was him in Farscape. He played uh, Scorpius, and so uh, you know he he actually looks a great deal like um, like Patrick Stewart. Um, let me see if I can go down. Like watch this. Look at these two images, top and bottom right here. This one here, that one there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can find. Yeah, this is this is him as. Um, as uh, Tarkin so you can see um, you know he's got that he's got that look he hasn't done a lot of acting between I think it was 2013 and 2018 but he has a project coming up soon which means he's still in the game I was concerned at first when I was making this pick I was like is he still acting is he even gonna do anything but yep apparently he's still acting and so uh, he would be one of my picks he is coming in at 59 years of age he's six feet tall but just look at him. He looks like he looks like um, Patrick Stewart. Uh, it would be perfect. I think that he he would he would fit so nicely visually into the role, and um, and acting wise, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's just fine. He did a good job with what he was given in, as as Grand Moff Tarkin. Um, no issues. I haven't seen a lot of his work, but at least based on looks and based on the limited amount of. Um, footage that I've seen him act in I think he's I think he's good um, so you know I could be wrong but let me know down below if you think that this would be a good pick I mean just freaking look at him he looks amazing he looks like a hybrid of uh, Patrick Stewart and one of my other picks which I'll be getting to very shortly but let's go ahead and jump to the next one Mark Strong so this one's on almost everybody's list okay um, if you haven't if you haven't seen Mark Strong on a list for uh, Professor X You've probably seen him on a list for um, another bald character like Mr. Freeze. I know I did a Mr. Freeze art of him a little while ago on my Instagram, the Stuff of Legend show. One issue that I have that I think would be a huge hindrance here is that he's actually playing a role in Shazam uh, coming up in 2019. So I don't think he would be 
able to play um, Professor X, but he's 55 years old. And then check this out, almost everybody's got him as a pick. So you take a look here, he looks the part. You take a look here, even with glasses, you can see he's kind of like, he's already fitting that bill. Um, here, Professor X. This one, they're comparing him to, um, uh, why did I just forget his name? James McAvoy, sorry I had to check that guys. You know, like you can see in his eyes, he's got that like, I believe in the cause. You know what I mean? Like he's got a really powerful um, leader personality. He's got that type of strength in his in his appearance, in his vibe. Like you look right into his eyes and it's just like, dang, that guy, that guy has purpose. Especially this one right here, look at that. I think he would be a great Professor X. Um, he's one of my favorite actors actually for the role. He, I think would be probably the best person to lead the X-Men, but I have a lot of great actors that I want, so I'm not I'm not 100% yet. Let me know down below if you guys want Mark Strong to play Professor X. So next up on the list is Jason Isaacs, and he is 55 years of age. Um, most people have him down to play villainous roles because he does them so freaking well. If you've ever seen The Patriot, if you haven't seen The Patriot, you need to see that movie. It's insane. It's one of the best movies of all time. But The Patriot, if you watch The Patriot, Jason Isaacs plays one of the, the commanding redcoats, uh, one of the bad guys. And uh, man, does he do such a good job. He plays also, I think it's um, Draco Malfoy's dad in uh, Harry Potter uh, in throughout the series. He, he's in Star Trek. Um, he's also in uh, Peter Pan. And so this is actually where this idea came from is that when I, when I saw Peter Pan, um, at first I didn't realize it was the same guy. He played um, Mr. Darling, the, the parent, uh, the father of all the kids, uh, Wendy and uh, John and everybody. And then he simultaneously played Hook. He played Captain Hook. He got to play the bad guy, which he's really good at, but he also got to play Mr. Darling, which he did very well. Um, and it was very compelling. And I, I wanted to see more of that. We don't get to see him uh, express his acting range very often. Most of the time he's playing villains or he's playing jerks <laughs> or he's playing people that are extremely, extremely serious. It would be nice to show him play someone that is serious, that is commanding, but is also compassionate and it is also a kind leader that plays a father figure to a bunch of essentially orphaned children. So I think that would be really cool. I wanna see Jason Isaacs stretch into one of those roles, just like he did when he played Mr. Darling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. A lot of people have him on their list for Magneto, but I'm not doing that list today. So uh, Jason Isaacs is on my list. Um, He's the bonus. So I've already done the top five. Now we're in the bonus. Jason Isaacs is number one on the bonus list. Jason Isaacs, he was in the Patriot, Harry Potter, Peter Pan, but he was also in Star Trek and he was also in Star Wars Rebels as the, the Inquisitor, uh, the Grand Inquisitor. And then he was also in Justice League um, uh, Gods and Monsters, I believe, as Lex Luthor. So again, that kind of shows he, he typically does play more sinister, evil roles, but I want to—I I would like to see him play Professor X. And let's take a quick look. There is only a handful of images for this one because most people don't have him playing this. But some—it looks like somebody might have photoshopped his his hair off here. Um, I think he looks great in that one. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's anything here. Somebody's doing kind of a side by side comparison. He's got that forehead for it. He's got the nose shape, the jaw. Um, just overall, he he very, very much looks the part. Um, I think you'd obviously have to do, you know, you'd have to shave his head, then do a bald cap, of course, um, to make sure that you don't get like the, uh, you know, he's showing the hair growing back. Look, this is people comparing him as Magneto, which also I think works really nicely. But, um, but yeah, Professor X, I think he would do a marvelous job. And actually, he this is what I was going to mention earlier. He, he looks a lot like the X-Men Evolution Professor X. So you guys let me know down below what you think about this bonus pick. Next up on the bonus list is Mr. Ralph 
finds himself, if I'm saying that correctly. He's 56 years of age. He also has a massive resume of playing villains. Schindler's List, The English Patient, 007 Skyfall, Red Dragon, Harry Potter, obviously he, him playing uh, Voldemort. Don't say his name. He's a fantastic actor. I think that if he were to be given the opportunity to play a good guy, <laughs> I haven't seen him play any good guys, but I've seen him play roles very well. And I would love to see him play Professor X, especially being that you guys already know I'm super aesthetic. I like to see I like to see similarities. I like I like visual nostalgia, right? Um, and so I think he would do really well. He looks very, very much like Professor X. A lot of people have already gone out of their way to cast him as Professor X. Look at this. Look at that. That's pretty spot on. This one. Yes. Um, let me see this one. Yes. He's got that. He's got that strong nose, the forehead, um, he, the, the chiseled, you know, like jaw. Um, he fits the bill. Like if anybody looks like Professor X, it's this guy. I mean, I think even, even more than any of the other picks, which all of them actually look a lot like Professor X, but I mean, this guy is just spot on. He's also British as well. And so it would, it would just, transition super nicely. I, I wanted to just present that 55 years of age. I think he's right in the pocket, incredibly talented. And I don't know that you can even find somebody that looks more like Professor X than Ralph Fiennes. But he, again, just like a couple of my other picks, I think that he would also be incredibly talented in the direction of playing more of a villainous role in say like Magneto. Let me know down below. This is all you guys. In the comments, if you scroll all the way down, you can let me know. After Ralph Fiennes, we have a very special one that I I've, I think is fun. It's more fun than it is practical. Um, and I just wanted to mention this. Ewan McGregor. <laughs> a lot of people are gonna be like, what? <laughs> but hear me out. 47 years of age puts him way young on my list. Um, but nevertheless, I wanted to show you kind of like, you know, he, he has a very similar look to, um, James McAvoy. And I think that his look would translate very closely, not exact, but close to, uh, the professor X from X-Men evolution. He's got the ability to play someone that's kind, compassionate, caring. We've already seen him play Obi-Wan, but he can also be fierce and powerful at the same time. Um, he's no stranger to using mind tricks. I think he would draw enough crowd. He's got enough on-screen presence that I think he would really be able to captivate the audience. And also for Disney, for instance, they would be able to get a lot more people watching the newest uh, iteration of the X-Men if Ewan McGregor was involved. He's got a massive cult following, probably bigger than anybody, any, any single actor. I think Ewan McGregor is probably one of the most, I don't know, worshipped actors of our lifetime, especially for just just simply being Obi-Wan Kenobi. So yeah, he's our only hope. And I think that we need to uh, give him a chance, but let me know down below if you think I'm crazy about this one. I mean, he is on the younger side, but my next, my next person on the bonus list is also young. So I just wanted to throw that out there and then uh, move forward. Lastly on my list, very, very close in age to Ewan McGregor, is Michael Rosenbaum. So most of you guys know him from Smallville. On Smallville, he played Lex Luthor. They shaved his head and then they put a bald cap over so you couldn't see his hair growing back through. He was the best part, honestly. He was the best part of Smallville. He's one of my favorite TV actors of all time. He was also in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Volume 2. He, was, uh, he played Martin X, one of the original Guardians alongside Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone at the end. If you watch the end credits, and then also when you see Stallone and his crew roll up and they go face to face with Yondu um, in that like space, um, I don't know, truck stop or whatever it was. Martin X was that crystalline looking dude that looked like a bunch of like light blue kryptonite, like ice almost. He almost looked like Iceman, but he walks up and he gets in the face of Yondu and then he takes off with uh, Sylvester Stallone's character. He didn't get any real face time. He's under a CGI mask. I think it would be really great to just plop him back into the Marvel Universe and give him an opportunity to play Professor X. Now, again, these pictures are from when he was much younger. This is from a little bit more modern right right here. This one, I don't know if it's gonna load full, full HD or anything like that, but he's a little bit older now. 
he's working with Stephen Amell from Arrow right now on on a wine project. But nevertheless, I think he would be a great pick. Um, he is considerably younger than anybody else on this list, um, so that would be a challenge. But he's an incredible, ta incredibly talented actor, and I think that he would pull off the role very, very well. So that is that is it. I'm gonna recap the the list for you guys. I've got Terry O'Quinn at 66 years old. I've got Brian Cranston, 62 years old. I've got Daniel Day-Lewis, 61 years old. I've got Wayne Pygram at 59 years old. Mark Strong at 55 years old. Kicking off my bonus list, I've got Jason Isaacs at 55 years old. Ralph Fiennes at 56 years old. Ewan McGregor at 47 years old. Michael Rosenbaum at 46 years old. And that is the end of my list for Professor Charles Xavier. Wow, this has been a big one. <laughs> I was able to get through it in pretty much the same time, but anyway, I'm really excited about these, these picks, but I'm also open to hearing about your picks. So two things. Two things I want you to do is let me know down below which of my picks was your favorite. Which one did you like the most and which one do you think is probably going to get picked uh, to play Professor X in the MCU when they get their iterations now, the second thing I want you to do is let me know who you want to see play Professor X, regardless of my list. Let me know down below so we can have that conversation. I'm super excited about this. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If you love it, share it with a friend that you know is gonna enjoy this. Also, be sure to subscribe, and if you haven't already, turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell. That way you can be alerted when I go live next time because I do go live very frequently, at least once a week. Uh, so you guys can take part in that. We can have fun in the comments, in the chat, in the live. That way you can have your questions answered right then and there. You don't have to wait for anything. So that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have two more videos in this series, one more fan casting and a final recap where I'm going to pick my top pick for each of the castings that I've done. So I have one more video coming that is fan casting and then one more to recap and pick out of these giant lists that I've made for you guys right here on the channel. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.